your ways. What's up, fam? It's your boy Demure here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel today. You'll notice we're taking a little bit of a different spin on things, and I'm going to be discussing the topic of these new beauties, the CDJ 3000s. And uh, before before I jump into things, what I need from you is that SLC. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and more importantly, hit the notifications bell to stay in touch with the new videos that we have up and coming. All right, so my first impression, after unboxing this beautiful design, and I say it's beautiful for a number of different reasons that I'll get into shortly, is just the small, noticeable slimmer casing so this is my cdj 2000 nexus here and this is the 3000 on the right side so it's just slightly slimmer i noticed that right off the bat and then the most largest improvement that i've seen substantial improvement that i've seen is in the screen much larger on the cdj 3000 versus the 2000 nexus 2 it's very obvious. You can look at them side by side here and see the noticeable difference. Even in the screen resolution, I can tell you, this is the 2000 Nexus 2 here. As you can see, standard resolution here. But when we go over to the 3000, we can see a noticeable difference. And just the smoothness of the resolution here. like. I, I just love it. That you, it's obvious that Pioneer took some time and care in it to show you just things visually and having them pop off. The color resolution is also just really uh, magnificent. It's very vibrant and full. Uh, and, and the dim feature on it is great. If you leave it on for a while, it dims nicely, saving the screen from burnout. Just standard stuff, but. It's the first thing I notice. It looks so it looks just great and jumps right at you. Next is the noticeable thing uh, is more about the feel. So the platter very smooth. Uh, it pops up the title of and the artwork of whatever you have loaded within the deck itself. I really like it. It's quite sharp from what you can see here, but the feel of it is a whole other thing. Uh, what I noticed is in terms of what I've had to do on the jog adjust it is so smooth that if I were to lighten it up completely it just spins and spins and spins uh, whereas on the Nexus 2002 uh, a little bit of a different experience it's not as smooth it's a bit heavier at least for me in terms of what I found in my experience so when I'm playing on a Nexus 2 I leave the jog adjust right about there and when I'm playing on the 3000 it's about halfway in terms of the weight and I just like it it's just really nice and smooth I'm not a scratch DJ at all but the feeling and playing on it you know in terms of making nudges you know, as you're mixing tracks uh, is really nice uh, I just can't uh, underscore the high grade of quality on the platter. I was talking to Pioneer DJ about this and how noticeable it was and I tell you if you ever get a chance to try it out definitely check this piece out. It's very obvious, very smooth to the touch and everything that it does you'll love it. The other piece that I noticed while playing on these is just the intuition, the intuitive nature of the placement of things. Although it's about the same as the CDJ uh, 2000X is too. The hot cues are now moved up at the top and when engaging those from a software perspective it's very smooth, very responsive. Uh, loop functionality right here is a noticeable change. You get four beats and eight beats and as you you know hit the four a few times it starts to cut things in half 
Whereas with the eight beats, if you hit that a couple more times, it starts to increment, you know, by eight beats. So it goes up to 16 and then I think it, it doubles up to uh, 32. So nice looping features there. The uh, other change that I know is just a slight change. It's more of a design piece. It's just in the direction with uh, slip reverse, forward and reverse. You get this nice sort of sleek encasing right here. Whereas on the Nexus 2002 uh, it is not the same. It's not sort of encased. Uh, just slight differences, but very nice in terms of the look and feel of things. Also, the buttons here in terms of uh, track search and the overall search in terms of forwards and backwards, the buttons are noticeably uh, different uh, because they're in more of a sunken casing. If you can see that, I'll try and angle it here versus the 2000. So again here. As you can see it's a little sunken and here on the 2000 it's just straight up buttons are up on top and you know the placement of things is just great yeah so again noticeable difference uh the 3000 only has the vinyl speed adjust whereas on a nexus 2000 you have the speed adjust and the release start uh, I think Pioneer did with the release start, did away with the release start rather on the 3000, making room uh, for these guys here, which is notably the key sync button, which is an awesome feature software wise. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate that just in a bit. But aesthetically, just about the same as the 2000 Nexus 2. Uh, obviously, the screen is quite different. It's also a little sleeker looking, a bit thinner, as I mentioned earlier. Very slight uh, difference in the, uh, uh, you know, the thickness of the unit and the casing of the unit. But uh, really great piece of kit in terms of how it looks aesthetically. I just love this thing, especially on the platter side. So those are the things that jumped out straight away for me. All right, so the other feature I want to discuss is the key shift feature. I have a wonderful acapella here from Aaron Gray. The track is called All I Need by DJ Gomi uh, as well. Aaron sung vocals on this. I had the pleasure of remixing this tune on Nervous Records a couple of years back, about three years now. And because his vocal is so strong, there's been times where I've been DJing and it's like, Man, it'd be nice to have Aaron's vocal um, hopefully in key with whatever song I'm mixing. So in this case, I got A, B uh, major, and then I got B major over here, which is, you know, Aaron's vocal. So let's give it a quick listen. I can remember how much time I wasted looking for love in all the wrong places. So you can see... You know, he's got a great voice, but it doesn't match the key of this song that I want to mess with. Let's listen to that. So you can hear that. So what we do in this case, I'd hit key shift here on Aaron's vocal. You can see it's B major, just in the center. So all I'm going to do is line it up with the key of the song and there it goes it goes green if i hit it again now it's in key a b major or a minor whatever um but the point is it's now lined up so let's listen to this as we bring this into the mix and i apologize i've had to keep my monitor low uh, so it doesn't mess with the audio too much but let's hear how this sounds so a bit lower but this feature is so dope oh uh, yeah so amazing 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 
seamless key shifting right in time. I love the creativity of this. And the only other thing about the whole key shift piece or playing in key is I think as a DJ, it's even more important that you know your records because you can easily just fall into, well, I'm just going to play whatever I'm going to play and uh, I'll know it's in key. It's better to know your songs and then that way, you know, from an air training perspective, it's cool too. But that's just me. Um, but I also see the unlimited creative possibilities. If you're in the moment of something and you're transitioning from one DJ to the next and you want to make sure you know the transition is smooth you want to stay in key so you can use the feature right on the deck uh, i'll show you this in terms of the searching so this is what i'm talking about right here so you see where it's all green these are all the recommended keys that will work in terms of what i have in my library here um, in terms of what I have on this deck. So this works through Ethernet link up. I got everything going through this hub here and as well as the V10. So it's essentially listening to whatever is in the mix. And then as you're scrolling through or browsing through tracks, it's telling you, you know, here's what songs highlighted in green, you know, will work with the key that you're currently playing. And I think this is a huge game changer in terms of being able to do things on the fly and not necessarily having to do any additional organization in record box to make sure you get the results of what you expect so those are really my first impressions of this thing i love the 3000s I'm definitely most likely going to get a third deck um, after playing on these two along with my old CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. Man, I gotta say that this is next level up stuff. And they also, I'm sure, got new firmware updates coming that advance on the already intuitive software as well. So Pioneer gets high points for me for developing this one. It is so, so dope. Much love and respect to you. Peace.